Oh, hello again. This time I'm going to show you my proper flux control net in painting compact workflow. This is a version that I decided to, to make for people who kind of get confused. Or don't like the noodle soup of the expanded workflow. This is not the kind of workflow I like to do because it hides the whole thing behind the nodes. The whole workflow is hidden and you won't see how it works. So you can't really easily change it or add new things or hijack it to add a new control net, for example, or something like that. But of course it's doable. I did not pin any of the nodes, so you can just drag them and try to understand what's behind it. But I really don't like this kind of workflow. That's why this is not the main workflow, but it's actually very clean and, and very nice to use. So. I decided to make it and to release it, and I'm going to show a quick video of it. It's pretty much the same as the other expanded workflow, but things are a little bit easier to use. I decided to take some decisions for you, so it's not all laid out here. This is a new version that I'm publishing right now, version 7.0. Uh, this has some big changes that I'm going to talk more about in the expanded workflow video, but basically, I added depth under Kenny control net, the Laura control net together with the Ali mama in painting workflow. The, it's important to say here as well that the depth and Kenny Laura control net won't work with flux fill. It's for the normal flux, the dev flux with the Ali mama in painting control net. Okay. So I'm just going to try to show this really quickly. This part loading the models. I didn't change anything. I did change quite a lot here on the LoRa options because I decided to force you guys to install LoRa Manager, which is a fantastic custom node. So instead of the usual LoRa stacker, I'm using the LoRa stacker from LoRa Manager. So this is new as well. This new group is where you should load your Flux Depth LoRa and your Canny LoRa. This is supposed to be always loaded. So you don't change anything. You just put your LoRa here because your Laura might have a different path or a different name. You just put the name here. I'm not going to teach you guys how to use the Laura manager. It's really easy. You have a button here to show you your Laura collection. And then you just copy the name here. Just as like automatic a lemon, a lemon worked. You can change the strength of the Laura. I recommend 0 0.75, but you can increase it. Because what my workflow does, which is quite different, I guess, from normal workflows is that you can actually change when you want the conditioning with the, the, the control net lower to stop. So you can just use it at the beginning of the generation, or you can go crazy and use it at the end, but it's going to be bad. You should use it at the beginning. I recommend around 0 0.28. You can try 50 of your generation, or you can go all in, of course. It's not a problem, but this is here. So you can actually stop using the Laura control net and fall back to your normal in painting with Ali mama. It gets better results if you don't use a lot of control nets. That's why I have this here. So you can play with this and you can also play with the Laura's strength. So this is new. You should always load your Laura's here, the canny and the depth. It will automatically choose which Laura is going to be used with these new control room options here. You can either use depth or candy. You can't use both. The workflow won't let you choose both. You can use none. Of course, you can simply not use any. I'm talking too much about this. I'm going to explain this in the expanded workflow. The objective of this compact workflow is to be more simplistic and easier to use. You just load your image here. You, you of course, right click it and paint your mask. So you can resize your image. You can check the image size. This is quite big. So let's resize it. This, this is the max resolution. So it's kind of easier. You should click true if you want to resize. And this is where you play with the mask. Okay. So you can invert the mask because sometimes you just want to change the background. For example, you can use the SAM detector. For example, you can just detect the person, but I don't want to change the person. 
I want to change the background. So you just invert the mask and uh, it will change the background. Let's see. Yeah, you see. Mask the background. The background is going to be painted. But let's go back to the person so I can show you the other options. So you have the expand and the blur radius. You should always use it somehow because it blends the image better. You see, this is like, let's just make an example. If you expand, it's going to expand the mask a lot. You see, I didn't add a large number to expand. But of course, you can customize this how you want. You can set the maximum a little bit bigger. The blur radius, though sometimes you really want to go big with the blur radius. It's going to be like a big mass blur. So you can play with that as well. I recommend you leave it at a small value so that it just blends better with the composite. So what else? You have the Aura. I didn't have this on the first simple compact workflow. So I added this here. Now you just click on true and it's going to use the Aura effect. What is the Aura effect? It's the same as I have already explained in, in the previous video. It creates an aura on the character. So the character is going to be fully painted and you're going to have a really faint mask around him. So maybe the K sampler will have a little bit more context and then paint a little bit better. You can control how visible the aura is. You see, this is very visible. You can leave it at a small value. As well, you can barely see it now. I recommend you leave it at around 60. You can adjust how much the aura is going to expand. So this is quite a big aura. Maybe you don't want such a big aura. You want a small aura. Or maybe you want a really big aura. And of course, you can also blur the aura. This is going to make it a little more blended. You see, the aura appears faint. What you can do with this is combine both effects. You can blur the whole image after you apply the aura. So the aura is going to work and then you can blur the whole thing. You see, it's going to blur the unpainted area. You might want to do that because it creates a better transition. So you can mix both techniques, right? So it's going to blur everything. You're going to blur the aura and the main mask. Sometimes you just want to have a really crisp aura. For example, you just leave it at zero. You see? And sometimes you really want to add some blur so that it blends better, right? This is kind of nice. I think it's nice to have everything in one place. The expanded workflow doesn't have this. So this is kind of an advantage of the compact workflow. It's really easier to do all of this here because on the expanded workflow, it's not that easy. You have to find all these values on each node here. It's really convenient. You just choose what you want to use. Okay. So let's invert. Actually, let's paint the whole thing. This is going to generate. You see, this is the depth map. It's going to be used only until about 30% of the generation. It's going to use this depth map. So this is it. This is the image. I didn't say anything about forests. It didn't paint the whole background. You can see that it tries to preserve the depth of the image. And it's a really nice in painting. I really like Ali Mama in painting. It's really good. So you can see it's nice. What else do I need to explain here? So this is kind of different on this compact workflow because on the expanded workflow, you actually need to upload your image again. There you're, you load your image and you need to upload your image here as well to get the original prompt. But with this compact workflow, this is done automatically. And if you leave this option on, it's going to pull the metadata. Of course, if the original image has the, the metadata, it's going to pull the metadata automatically, right? So. You see, this is going to be saved on this image, not my in painting prompt. If you want your in painting prompt to be actually saved instead of the original metadata, you can just turn this off. But this is actually nicer than the expanded workflow because it does everything automatically. 
but sometimes it fails, sometimes it doesn't pull your original image metadata. In this case, you can just do it manually. How do you do it manually? Just click this, leave both options on, and load your reference image here. And it's going to use this image for the metadata. It's going to show, show the prompt here if it has a prompt. Uh, if it do doesn't have a prompt, if it's completely empty, a new workflow actually sees it. When it is empty, it will write the impainting prompt on the metadata, the final metadata. So you always get a prompt on a new image. But of course, sometimes you just want to have a reference image because let's say you're going to paint his mouth or maybe his teeth and you just write close up teeth or extremely close up teeth. And you don't want to end up with a whole image with just extremely close up teeth as your prompt. You want to actually have the original prompt. So this workflow is going to retrieve it automatically. And if you want to have a, a reference to never change, to always use that as the base for your in paintings, you just load your image with the prompt, uh, prompt you want to keep here. It doesn't even need to be the same image as your in painting image. You can load a completely different image with a prompt that you want to be saved on your image. What this retrieves is the prompt, the negative, the seed, and I think the CF key and some other parameters are retrieved from, from this image here and saved on your in painted final image. I recommend always leaving this on. And if it is failing too much, you can just use your reference image here. But for a simple in painting job, you can just leave this on and do your in painting normally. One thing that this workflow doesn't have that the expanded one has, it's the context image because when you use localized area in painting, you could actually use a context mask that I already explained in the previous video. If you use a context mask, you can expand the area that's going to be impainted with the, the localized area in painting. I removed this because it would require another loaded image just for the context. And I wanted this to be really clean and really easy to use. So it doesn't have a context mask. So if you want to actually expand your context, I recommend the dot technique that I talked about in the last video, where you just do a really small dot on the expanded area you want the k sampler to generate so if i do a dot here and a dot here it's going to use this whole full area i already explained this quite well in the last video so i'm not going to explain it again this is a problem you see this is a little gray why is it a little gray because i'm probably using the aura mask and it's going to create an aura inside here which i don't want I just want a normal mask with just some blur. So I'm going to turn off the aura mask and then I need to not invert the mask as well. Right? This is what I want in paint. So that's it. You see, it's pretty good, pretty seamless. Sometimes maybe you just want it to be more seamless. In this case, you can actually add more blur if you think it's not going to blend well. Just increase the radius blur. It's probably going to result in better blending, right? So this is it for this workflow. I'm going to talk more in depth in the other video about the new implementations. I actually forgot to show you guys something important that I introduced in the previous version, the version 6.5. So this part of the video is going to be a quick outpainting to show you the hard to blend option. I'm not going to pre-process the voice again. Stone White voice is probably going to sound weird and not very natural because I'm not gonna do the whole processing my voice. So my accent's probably gonna show up. Anyway, let's load this image here. This image is one of those images that it's really hard to outpaint. Why? Because it has the some simple colors, some uh what can I say? There, there's not a lot of details in the borders. They're the same colors and really simple colors, this type of image is really hard to blend. The same thing is with the example image, right? The example image is actually really hard to blend as well if you actually try to outpaint this image. So let's go back again. Let's try this. So I'm not gonna I'm gonna try to make this really fast. Uh let's go with just a normal one and without painting. Let's get all negatives. Okay, so for outpainting, as I already told you guys in the last video, you better use blocks fill.
because Flux View is really good without painting. And Altinama is not that great, but it, it does work well sometimes. So it's not really bad anyway. So, but Flux View is really better. So let's try Flux View again. It doesn't matter if you leave Death or Candy on because it's not going to be used with Flux View. And let's try to, I'm not going to use a full denoise because my workflow actually does a fast outpainting. Uh, it's going to use those colors. So it's, it's actually better to not have a full denoise sometimes. This is using, this is not using the how to blend option. Let's see how it works. It detects when it's using flux view and it's not going to use the Laura. Okay. So we, this is flux view without the how to blend. You see, it's good, but you can definitely see the edges here, right? It's not perfectly blended. So let's try with the hard to blend option, which is supposed to help. It's not perfect because all it does is actually mess around with some values on the feathering and the grow mask with blur automatically. So it's hidden behind here. This is going to use those values when you click on the yes. So this is it. This is with the Archer band. Look, it's pretty good. Can you actually see some small decolorations here? Yes, it's a little bit different. The color is not perfect. It's not a perfect blend, but it's way better than without it. You see, it's, it's hard to see where the outpainting starts and ends. So it's a good option. I wanted to show that for you guys. With Alimama, this is way more finicky. It's not this good. Alimama is not really the best model for outpainting, but it does work as well. So goodbye guys thank you for watching this is it leave a comment if you want also if you want any help if you want me to actually expand this any further to actually add anything just let me know bye at